the bright band, what we call the radar bright band. That's um, where you have enhanced reflectivity due to melting hydrometeors. So you have large snowflakes that melt, they get covered by water, and um, they, they become very bright on the radar. So um, this only shows up, though, when you have uh, dominance of the ice processes. In the, so that's what we typically use to separate out stratiform from convective in the rain band. Um, and then the arrows here show um, two different types of flow. Um, one is the sort of convective scale, and the other is the mesoscale flow. Um, though the, also the, um, the, the uh, temperatures here are values of theta e. And this, uh, people get somewhat confused by this sometimes because there's arrows going many different ways. But you can think of this as two different types of circulations that we find in the rain band. Um, one is the classic sort of in, up, out circulation, right? So just like what we find in the eye wall, in, up, out, um, you see that in the individual rain bands as well. So we know there's vertical motion, and that vertical motion tends to be maximized on the inner edge of the eye wall, and then the rain falls out behind it, right? Um, but then these, you have this other circulation that's uh, a, more of a general outflow at mid-levels, and then um, an actual descending inflow um, that, that comes here. And this descending inflow is associated with that stratiform. So if you remember yesterday, we talked about um, convective versus stratiform divergence profiles. So the convective profile has convergence at low levels, divergence aloft. So that's the same thing you see here, convergence, divergence. And then the uh, stratiform has convergence at mid-levels. So this is much like what you would see in the uh, structure of a mid-latitude squall line, a descending rear inflow branch, right, of jet. Um, so, uh, so you see these two types of circulations. And this was, um, I think Gary did an amazing job of this, of putting this together from uh, very limited data in 1981. Um, we were able to do this, uh, uh, look at this structure even better in uh, RAINX. So this is a figure from uh, Henson House. So Deanna Hens uh, was Bob House's PhD student. She's now a professor at the University of Illinois. Um, and uh, this is a rain band through uh, Hurricane uh, Katrina uh, when it was a Category 5. So this is a, a top-down cross-section of the principal rain band here. So you can see that from Eldora. So you can see the primary, so we're on the east side of the storm, um, you know, cyclonic flow here, right? One thing I think that's really neat about Eldora is that you see all this fine scale structure of the reflectivity. You know, when you look at this from satellite, it just looks like a big band, right? But in the, um, with the resolution of Eldora, you can see these individual convective elements. And if you take a cross section through here, um, you see, uh, we look at the, the, um, the, the, the structure, it looks a lot like what Gary Barnes showed in 1983 that you have this in, up, out circulation. So you see that outflow uh, here and the tilted eye wall structure. Now this is um, uh, ex uh, not exactly the scale. So this is 16 kilometers here and um, 13 kilometers here. So it's um, stretched a little bit. Uh, but, uh, but you can definitely see the slope here and that in, up, out. But then if you take another cross section, um, just a little bit, uh, farther down, um, so uh, this is uh, about 10 minutes worth of data here. Um, sorry, this uh, C is uh, the two kilometer level, and this is at the 3.5 kilometer level. But um, take another cross section at a slightly different spot, you can see this um, more of the other type of circulation that Gary talked about, this outflow here, and then this descending branch um, on the inside edge. So. Um, so we've used the airborne radar data to say a lot of really interesting things about, um, about the rain band structure. So, uh, I guess that's oh, excuse me. Yes, go ahead. Uh, three, uh, three previous, that's right. Well, yeah. Next one. Oh, one more? This one? Or no? Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, this one, this yeah. one, this one. So. Uh, in this slide, uh, this is uh, primary I wall and secondary I. Ah, no. Uh, pre uh, principal rain band and secondary rain band. Mm -hmm. uh, what this thing from? Ah, good question. Um, well, in the case that I'm showing, it's more. This is more of the structure of the principal rain band. But I think you see the same structure in other rain bands that are around the same radial distance from the center. 
Um, so there's a new paper by uh, Moon and Nolan, uh, actually a two-part paper. They try to do a more categorical um, distinction between primary rain, uh, inner rain bands, outer rain bands, primary rain bands, and look at the differences in structure using a numerical model. Um, they find that the, the inner rain bands are, you know, down, and when you get just outside the eye, eye wall, the, the shearing flow is very strong. And so the rain bands tend to get sheared out, uh, and, and they tend to have a different structure. Um, when you're out farther here, you get more individual convective elements. So, um, so I'd say that one of the biggest differences is as you go in, the, the swirling flow becomes very strong. Any convection that fires gets smeared out uh, or sheared axisymmetrically or azimuthally. So that, that's probably the biggest difference between the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the shear is also strong in the eyeball. So convection can tend to have an individual structure, but uh, in the eyeball, there are no individual structure. I think the uh, inertial stability has a good, uh, important parameter to, ch uh, change the uh, to have a difference between the eyeball and the outer rain band. If the inertial stability is strong, the uh, circulation is prevented. And so the convection has to be in a two-dimensional structure. Mm -hmm. But in the outside uh, of the eye wall, the inertial stability is low, so they can have an uh, individual structure with yeah. the mesobotesis. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that's the reason that uh, a tornado, a hurricane related tornado, can uh, develop freely, uh, frequently in the outer. Yeah, out here, right. I would agree with you. I think. Uh, and the other thing I would add is, um, in addition to changes in inertial stability, actually it's uh, the deformation, if you calculate the deformation, so right in the eye wall itself, you, I mean, you have a lot of vorticity everywhere, but um, I mentioned the Okubo-Weiss parameter yesterday, the difference between the curvature vorticity and the shear vorticity. Um, the, <coughs> Just outside of the eye wall, where, or outside of the radius of maximal wind, where the DVDR decreases very rapidly, tends to be a region of very high de deformation um, in the flow. And so that the horizontal shearing that occurs there is, is different than it is right in the eye wall. So uh, Chris Rosoff has a nice paper about this, talking about what he calls the filamentation time. And so that's the time it takes for a, yeah, for a, uh, a convective parcel to be um, filamented, or, or, you know, so an individual element to be sheared out. And um, if that time is uh, very short, then it's very difficult for the convection to last a long time. So the filamentation time in the eye wall tends to be slightly longer than it is just outside the eye wall. So uh, most of the rain bands that occur right in here, um, they, they get very rapidly filamented, as you suggest. But then, yeah, as you go further out, that filamentation time then goes back down, um, and then the inertial stability also goes down, and then that, that contributes to a different character of the rain bands out, outside. That's a good point. So recently, uh, you know, maybe 10 years ago, many, many people think it's related to the, you know, vortex rossby wave you know, propagation. But recently, the other kind of, such kind of, you know, kinematic, uh, you know, kind of bent, or like, uh, like, uh, how can I say, you know, uh, downdraft kind of, you know, some dynamic features is more related to uh, inner or outer plane mm bands. -hmm. I think more, you know, recently such kind of opinions dominate. But how about, do you think about, you know, how do you think about the vortex rocky or? That's a good question. Um, yeah, in a, the Moon and Nolan paper that I mentioned, they argue right. that um, the inner rain bands are not vortex rocky waves. Just mm -hmm. right? Yeah, if you just take, they, they do some simple experiments where you take a, a blob of convection or something and then put it in a swirling flow with uh, a radial gradient. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, vertical sheared flow so that you have a downdraft um, 
you have an asymmetry in the secondary circulation. And they show that, yeah, basically you just take that and then you know, smear it out, and that's a rain bed. Um, and they show in their simulation, at least, that there is no formal coherence between the vorticity, or at least the potential vorticity, and the reflectivity field that you might expect with vortex Rossby rays. So they argue, at least in the inner rain bands, that those are not vortex Rossby rays. Um, but then there's other new papers that also that have come out that do show coherence um, with that. Um, some with observations. There was some work at the uh, hurricane conference that I saw um, that that talks about that. So I don't think that the argument is settled yet. Um, I think. Well, I guess I will say I. The, the basic idea of some of the early work that suggests it was all sort of gravity wave driven is definitely right, probably right. not true. Um, I think it's probably some combination and it does depend on where you're at in the vortex. In the, early, in the inner part it might be slightly different than the outer part. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we need more research there. We need more observations. It's very difficult to, I mean the vortex Rossby wave idea, I think there are very clearly vortex Rossby waves whether or not those are mm, mm, uh, mm. rain bands yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is a different sto story too, right? Yeah, I agree so, with that. Uh, partly because you're, you're generating a lot of vorticity in the rain bands from the convection. So it, it becomes quite complicated mm. as opposed to the original idea behind vortex Rossi waves where you, um, you know, they, they, they're more of a propagation as opposed to generation. So, uh, yeah, so I don't think the issue settled yet. Any other questions about the rain bands? Could you move on to the next slide? So oh, yeah, sure. In this slide, I, I want to confirm that this slide, you showed that this rain band is related to the high wall, right? Uh, this is actually principal rain band. Principal rain band. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sorry, I should put more, more yes. slides in. I had too, too much stuff, so I had to cut it out. But yeah, there would be this one here. Yes. So, yeah. I I I Yes, yes, that's a good point. Yeah, the eye wall would look more like this, right? So I mean, in general, right? Uh, but this is a sh much shallower feature than the eye wall, so about you know five six kilometers, um, and then. Uh, uh, yeah, you you wouldn't see this type of thing really well. I take that back a little bit. Uh, when I talk about Senlaku, you do see this type of circulation actually in Senlaku on the um, uh, up sheer uh, left side. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that, that. So, I mean, you can think of this as sort of the classic uh, convective type profile, yes. and this is like a stratiform profile. I mean, this still has a convective element to it, but, um, but it, this is a very clearly stratiform right here, right? And so there, there's that. A combination of different flow in the in the in the rain band. Uh, one other point I'll, I'll make briefly: um, uh, Anthony Didley, who's also now at Illinois, um, looked at this very carefully for Hurricane Rita. I'm not going to show his results today, but he showed this. Um, uh, I, I wish it was schematic, but that the it tends to be more convective here and more stratiform here, so that as the, the convection basically matures as it travels downstream. But, yeah. Could you show the next slide? Yep. The upper right particle section is very impressive for me mm -hmm. because the uh, airflow direction is quite different from the axis of a reflective peak. Yes. Yeah. I think the hydrometeors are not uh, flown along the updraft. The primary uh, rain, but the air, even in the even the air is balanced in a gradient wind and a hydrostatic. But the hydrometeor no need to in the balance of right. a gradient. Yes. Because the because the density is quite different. Yes, I agree. Uh, you you're gonna get uh, the hydrometeors will. Fall out in different yes, places. So right. hydro, for the hydrometeors, it's a situation of super gradient. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. centrifugal yeah. force is stronger than the pressure gradient mm -hmm. force. Yeah, and, and actually, Henson House have a really nice uh, uh, 
cartoon, I, I don't have it here, I can pull it up, but um, that shows that so, so basic idea that this, it, this updraft is always right on the inner edge of that of the actual rain band, not the, the updraft, uh, or at least I won't say always, but in a composite sense, the updraft is found sort of inside, inside edge of the rain band, not right up in the middle of the rain band. Yep. And there also then tends to be uh, the other thing the cartoon shows, which you can't see so much here, is that you get a jet uh, forming right here uh, in the, that would be into the page, tangential wind jet that forms as a result of this uh, structure as well. So that's part of the reason that the rain bands tend to have the strongest winds. So, um, so there's a, uh, uh, that's from vortex stretching and tilting, um, that you get the jet in the eyeball. So, um, yeah, I could spend a lot more time on rain bands. I, I actually wanted to uh, put more about this, but I, you know, as always, run out of time. So even with three hours, it's not enough time to talk about all the good papers. So, uh, so Mike, please read these papers. <laughs> so you can have a break. Okay, yeah, that's a good place for a break. Yeah, because I'll go to eyewall replacement next, so that's a good place for a break. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Questions. Oh, yes. Um, I think that's just an artistic rendering in this case. So this is more of a cartoon. Um, as I'll show, well, we'll get to in the, the end. So here's what one particular secondary eye wall looks like. In this case, it's completely symmetric. Um, but there are other cases where it is only a partial or it has breaks. So I think there's some variation there. So in this particular case, it's just a, uh, an illustration or art, uh, artistic rendering of a typical eye wall that may have breaks <laughs> or not have breaks. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so we'll take a break and then uh, come back in a few minutes. Okay. In 10 minutes. Okay. So let's start from 20 past. Okay.